Mr. Welcome back to the channel, baby. I got some news for you. Well, not really news, this is more speculation. Speculation being Eric Comlin yesterday, this was early, early yesterday morning, I screenshotted this from his Instagram. So I saw that he posted on stories, Scotia Bank, health and wellness, one times one day in Toronto. So could this just be a health conference or Scotia Bank, who are they? Scotia Bank, their company, a leading bank in Canada and a leading financial services provider in the Americas. We are here for every future. We help our customers, their families and their communities achieve success through a broad range of advice, products and services, including personal and commercial banking, wealth management and private banking, corporate and investment banking and capital markets. Could Eric Holmlin be looking for a non-dilutive option instead of doing, say they don't get the reverse split, how will they raise the money? Is he looking for this non-dilutive option by looking towards investment banks? Could just be speculation, could just be a hunch. But in the last five days, Bionanogenomics has gone from 63 cents and it's been rising like crazy. It went up, oh, gone up again as well to 81 cents. So it's now 26% up from the low of Friday, the 26th of May. This be that, or is it the shorties? Because I was looking at short interest at the moment. Institutional ownership has stayed roughly the same amount over on Fintel. It's 27%. It's dropped a couple percent actually with some uh, institutions exiting their positions. Some have continued to build on their positions but only briefly only small pieces in terms of short interest let's take a take a look here you know and they're actually shorting hard again so i was looking at uh, the bingo short shares that, that were available and they had dropped and there was more available in the market now it looks like there's only a few available left so they must be shorting hard again borrowing fees this is what i was looking at at the moment so with these borrowing fees so this is the interest rate that must be paid by a short seller of the u.s stock bingo to the lender of that security and it's shown in an annual percentage in terms of APR. So if we take a look at the 31st of May, for example, you know, the, the maximum it was for the day is 38.45%, minimum was 17.47%. And if we take a look now, it's creeping up again, the short interest. So for them to borrow or lend it, the max is now 41% and the latest is 40.5% in order to borrow that share. In terms of the short volume ratio, we could see here on the 18th of May, 52%, 58%, 40%, percent but now it's at 38 percent in terms of finra's short volume ratio is this kind of steadily increasing price at the moment is it just shorts that are releasing their current position could we see a short squeeze that brings us above a dollar we'll still have the same problem though if they're unable to get the reverse split if they're unable to raise capital we'll still be in that position where we're running out of cash and we need cash in order to operate but the stock price has steadily been climbing you know, 80 cents, 81 cents. I didn't average down at all at 63 cents. I'm still waiting to see what happens with the reverse split and figuring out how they are going to raise cash. Anyways, let's go into LinkedIn next. LinkedIn, these are a few updates. So this is a Jean Loring. She's got a PhD and she's from Scripps Research Institute. She's talking about this presentation coming in Boston in USA, BioNano Innovation Showcase. And she's been stating structural abnormalities arising in the genomes of IPSCs and other cells. IPSCs are induced pluripotent stem cells. What are they used for? It states here they can be used to model a wide range of diseases, including Alzheimer's disease, heart disease, kidney disease, muscle disorders, blood diseases, diabetes, and other conditions affecting the human body. She is speaking about optical genome mapping, and she has said it's a transformative solution for genomic integrity and off-target characterization in cell lines. In this informative one-hour session, BioNano will present three leading experts to share their experiences and data using the BioNano Genomic Sapphire system, the platform in their research and development and manufacturing processes. So Gene Loring is going to be talking about the use of OGM, assessing genomic integrity in these IPSC cultures and engineering. Then you'll have Suxi de Raven talking about optical genome mapping's capability for the off and on target structural variations in CRISPR-Cas and base editing research. And then you will have Travis Hardcastle presenting applying optical genome mapping for the quality control of cell biorepositories in a more high throughput industrial setting. So overall, this session will demonstrate the potential of bionanogenomics unique optical genome mapping technology in the cell and gene therapy research and development and how it can significantly improve the quality, safety and overall risk profile in next generation therapy development and manufacturing. BCC research, this market, the global market for induced pluripotent stem cells should grow from $2.8 billion in 2021 to $4.4 billion by 2026. And she was stating, did you think that whole genome sequencing and a karyotype would tell you everything about changes in the genomes of cells? 
they won't. Global genome-wide rearrangements arise from CRISPR editing and other stresses. They're talking about how optical genome mapping is effective and we know that a lot is going on with CRISPR at the moment, that this CRISPR technique, CRISPR gene editing, is the genetic engineering technique in the molecular biology by which the genomes of living organisms may be modified. This is helping people with a whole host of diseases and it's predicted to reach by 2030 $14.8 billion dollars by Straits Research. It's been all over the news. They've been using it with mice models. They've been using it and saying that it may help with heart disease after a heart attack. It may improve cancer immunotherapy and it may have the power to fight human diseases. Lots of people, lots of different media outlets are covering it saying we can cure disease by editing a person's DNA. Why aren't we? Not only can it be used to treat disease, but it can also be utilized to modify crops. Very interesting that this is going to be covered and I would love to watch this if I'm available. By Nanogenomics is has heavily been talking about you know the different research interests and how it can help in cancer genetic disease optical genome mapping can help with genomic integrity cell quality control and it can identify all classes of genomic structural variation linkedin just about a day ago jennifer alvarez was talking about bionanogenomics regional meeting downtown at northwestern university talking about optical genome mapping experts presenting to the ogm curious on applications for both constitutional and hematology dr jordan racker is going to be back in town from Children's Hospital Los Angeles. She's going to talk about experience using the Sapphire system and she's going to talk about pediatric leukemias. Not only that but there will be Alex Hasty, who is the Vice President from Clinical and Scientific Affairs at BioNano talking about ionic DNA purification and optical genome mapping and the genomic techniques to transform clinical research. We also have Ulrich Brokel, MD Professor, Chief Section of Genomic Pediatrics from the Medical College of Wisconsin. And he's going to be talking about optical genome mapping for constitutional chromosome analysis research applications. About a week ago, six days ago, Sebasa Bodor posted, and this is coming out of Hungary, so Anna Biko from Semmelweis University from their group presenting the first Hungarian optical genome mapping bionanogenomics data generated from 50 patients that have acute myeloid leukemia at the annual meeting of Hungarian Society of Hematology and Transfusology. Diagnostic implementation coming soon, bionano. And over in Brazil, this is translated, it was in a uh, Portuguese, Brazilian, as you can see here, DNA fragments, they were talking about optical genome mapping, studying structural variations in DNA, and you can see here that they've hashtagged Sapphire, BioNano, Uniscience to Brazil, and you can see the matrix. So it's interesting, what is going to happen with BioNano genomics? Drop me some comments down below. Before we finish this video as well, I want you guys to take a look at this most recent video that's just popped up. Actually, it was a few days ago, five, six, seven days ago, Overcoming Uncertainty, a remarkable genetic breakthrough. It only had about 200, 300 views. So I wanted to put it on my channel so you guys can watch it as well. I'll put this in the next video. I'll just do a quick intro and then you can watch this video. Make sure you watch it because it's very interesting. It's over in Amsterdam and it's about a couple. They've been trying to have a, a kid and their kids keeps having these tumors and dying early. So I think the, the first kid died after six months. Um, no, the first kid died after two years or one year. The second kid died after six months and they kept having this problem and they couldn't find it with any other technique. So they used optical genome mapping and found the variant that was causing it. Helped them with their diagnostic odyssey. They just wanted answers. They wanted to find out why their kids keep dying of tumor. So, you know, there's many unanswered questions and I have, I have friends as well that um they're going through a lot in terms of having multiple miscarriages and things like that so i wonder if optical genome mapping can also help in this field too anyways i hope you enjoyed this video drop me some comments down below hit me a thumbs up drop me some comments hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and share this video where you can online i really appreciate it i just want to give you up to date um information as soon as i can find it please remember none of this is financial advice it's for entertainment only and i'll see you in the next video mr Invest a lot over and out, baby.